A claim of a child abduction at the mall whips parents into an online frenzy. Police say it's not true. We'll look at how child trafficking actually happens, as opposed to what people say on social media. Colorado's biggest craft brewery is not a craft brewery anymore. We remember a Coloradan who confronted racists before confronting racists was cool. And we're asked to find out why the home of the Broncos is lit up like game day when the Broncos aren't home. All that is next. A claim of an attempted child abduction at Park Meadows Mall is going viral today. It's causing panic among parents throughout the metro area, even though police say it is entirely fiction. And the suggestion that the incident was tied to child trafficking, that just ignores what the FBI says about how child trafficking actually works. So we're going to show you the claim that's circulating online. We're going to stamp it not true so that people can't take this news story out of context to help them spread the rumor. The viral claim on social media is that a woman's daughter was briefly abducted at Park Meadows Mall in Lone Tree last Friday. The claim is that security camera footage shows a woman snatching a kid out of the line to see Santa. The social media posts say that the girl was recovered when the kidnapper let her go. Again, Lone Tree police say that did not happen. The mother involved did not file a police report. Investigators saw that viral post and they went to the mall and reviewed the security camera, the camera footage. They say that it shows a child wandering off with a woman who is dressed like her mother. Police say that mall security found the child and the family reunited them. So I, I texted with the woman who made some of the initial posts that sparked this panic. She did not want to talk. She said that it was not her story to share and she wished me good luck in finding out what happened. Spring and Anusha Roy, because Anusha, you have covered human trafficking mm -hmm. in Colorado for years now, and the experts say that incidents like this imaginary one at the mall are simply not how it happens. Yeah, and to be crystal clear about it, kidnapping is not really the MO of a human trafficker. And what they were saying is that a lot of times they're targeting vulnerable kids, you know, like kids who have run away. And at this moment right now, what investigators are particularly worried about is that traffickers are reaching their victims online. They're grooming them. They're forming this relationship to even gain their trust before they they're even meeting their victims. And as this problem is continuing to morph, it's getting harder to investigate. Backpage was notorious for its thinly veiled ads for prostitution. When the Fed shut it down last year, investigators celebrated. It certainly was a good thing around Backpage, but in the short term, there was also some negatives. Now, instead of one popular spot traffickers use and investigators closely watched, Christian Gardner Wood with the Boulder District Attorney's Office said traffickers dispersed online and started using several platforms to target victims. We certainly have seen that more recently, that social media is becoming a um, a place for traffickers to go. Social media and dating sites are all places where traffickers can check photos and read up on a person. Just make sure we don't have any cars visible in that area. This is something the FBI saw in the metro area as recently as this summer. The operations that we do um, also include um, social media operations. And um, typically what we see is um, underage minor boys. In July, the FBI reported with the help of local law enforcement, they rescued four kids and eight adults and arrested one sex trafficker. But when it comes to holding an online platform criminally responsible, it's almost impossible. There's not really a route for that. Colorado law is based around holding an individual accountable for their actions. Also, a lot of these social media platforms weren't created to commit crimes and may not always be aware that some of their users are doing just that. So with this new landscape on human trafficking, law enforcement in Colorado had to regroup. This as law enforcement to find other investigative avenues to identify our vulnerable victims. So the one way that a business could get in trouble is through a consumer protection. Essentially, if a company does find out that someone is using their online platform for trafficking and then allows it to continue, that is when they can get in trouble. So, of course, with this story comes a familiar line, right, of paying attention to what your kids are doing online and, of course, checking those privacy settings as well. We want parents to be vigilant everywhere, but I, yes. you just hope that people aren't terrified to go into public spaces because no. of imaginary kid snatchers and then get Johnny home and just let him go up to his room and do whatever online. No, exactly. And, and this is these kind of viral posts. They've happened before and mm. they have been disproven before. And so the real area where investigators would ask people to pay attention to is, is what their kids are doing online. All right.
Thank you, Nusha. The Environmental Protection Agency downgraded the metro area's air quality this week. Democratic Governor Jared Polis invited them to do it, said that Colorado no longer wanted to claim an exemption that some of the pollution was blown in from out of state. Last week, particulates again rained down on neighborhoods near the Suncor plant on the north side of town. Today, the governor said he would like to see those incidents dealt with differently. We too would love to see uh, additional action and support for air quality and monitoring around these events. One of our important budget requests, you know, John, John asked about what's important. It's a, it's a relatively modest amount in the scheme of things. I think it's, you know, 2.7 million, but very important for the Air Quality Control Commission to be able to do this work uh, around emissions. The EPA's downgrade of our air quality rating is going to force the state to cut down on, on smog. It comes from cars, the oil and gas industry, and a number of other sources. Former Colorado Eagles hockey player Akeem Alou says he does not want the team manager fired for dressing up as him in blackface. The manager made a recent apology for dressing up as a Lou at a team party in 2011. The photo just came out last week. This comes at a time when professional hockey is dealing with issues of racism in the sport. A Lou is a leading voice in that conversation. It actually led to the firing of an NHL coach recently. That is Eagles equipment manager Tony Denizer, who was put on leave for the blackface incident. Alou and the Eagles put out a joint statement today saying that Dinesar offered an emotional apology and Alou accepted it. The city of Lafayette is trying to right a historical wrong tonight. Families of color raised money to build that community's original pool and then they were not allowed to swim there. Tonight, the city is renaming the current community pool after a woman who led that fight against racism and also spoke out about the role of the KKK in the 1930s. Our Sonia Gutierrez has the story of Rosa Lovato Luares. In 1989, the city broke ground on the Bob Berger Recreation Center, which was a brand new recreation center. It was supposed to be a place where beautiful memories are made. They struck cement, which was the remains of the original pool. Instead, they uncovered a darker side of history. So the story starts in 1934, uh, when the city of Lafayette decided to build its first swimming pool. Construction began, but Melissa Heisel, director of Lafayette Public Library, says that the city ran out of money. And so they reached out to residents and they asked them to contribute um, bags of cement, and also money. Lots of families did, but the biggest donation came from Latinx family, the Lovato Lueras family. On July 31st, 1934, the pool opened and Rose Lueras brought her daughter Rosabelle to the pool, excited, you must imagine her excitement, to come and swim in a swimming pool. But they weren't allowed to swim. There was a sign that said white trade only and they were turned away. Rose fought back. She filed a lawsuit against the city to get access to the pool. Which was incredibly brave. That lawsuit came with a cost. Heisel said the KKK, which had a heavy presence in Colorado at the time, intimidated the Lueras family. Rose was presumably just terrified and she and her daughter relocated to California. Where she was ran over by a car and killed just weeks before the trial. Her daughter was, I think, 13 years old at the time and had to testify on her mother's behalf. Not Rose or any of the other Latinx families were ever allowed in the pool. Instead, the pool that had only been open for two weeks closed and it was filled with dirt. You need to acknowledge past wrongdoings head on um, if you want to do better going forward. This naming of the pool is really to say the people who were here before us were wrong and they did terrible things and we can't change that, we can't take that away, but we can acknowledge it and we can go forward. For next, I'm Sonia Gutierrez. There are 25 families involved in Rose's lawsuit over the Lafayette pool. We're told that 22 of those families are represented at tonight's dedication. New Belgium Brewery's employee ownership plan was thought to be one reason why they would never sell to a big chain. Well, today, employees decided they were perfectly okay with doing that. They approved the sale of what was Colorado's largest craft brewery, now joining an international company based in Asia. New Belgium started in Fort Collins in the founder's basement. And when that sale closes by year's end, more than 300 employees will be taking home at least $100,000 in proceeds. 
Denver City Council is moving closer to charging you for grocery bags in the city. It's, it's a fee that really wouldn't raise money to do anything other than to convince more people to switch to reusable bags. City Council moved it ahead last night. One more vote and it goes to the mayor for his signature. Stores would charge 10 cents for every single use paper or plastic bag. People who use food stamps would be exempt. The money would be going back into a marketing campaign to convince more people to switch to reusable bags. Quick update to a story that we told you about neighbors trying to save a bit of Old Town Arvada. They have won their battle against developers to preserve two old homes. There was appeal after appeal. It ended in a tie vote on city council, which meant that developers do not get permission to build condos there. She's been homeless, so she knows. I know what a big difference even just this one item makes. Now she's challenging others not to look away. The Broncos have their game day lights on, and it's not game day. Why? That's next. Oh, it was a beautiful day today with sunshine. Temperatures were 10 degrees warmer. Matter of fact, our high was 42. Sometimes it's okay to be average. <laughs> How about that? 10 degrees warmer tomorrow. We have winds out of the southwest ahead of a storm that's just now moving on shore in California. 
Our storm that moved through over the weekend is well off to the east, creating all kinds of problems for travelers, Washington, Boston, New York. Meantime, here in the nation's midsection, high pressure, the dominant feature, keeping the storm track to the north. This system will come in as more of a wind shift for lower elevations with a brief mountain snow shower. We're drying cold again tonight with fair skies are low at 19. Tomorrow, sunny and 52 degrees. Temperatures just a smidge cooler on Thursday, but still dry when the front rolls through. Warmer Friday, how about 60 in December for Saturday and Sunday? Slight chance of a snow shower Tuesday night into Wednesday. Wouldn't that be nice? And I love the dog days of winter. These beautiful pups up at Squaw Pass today with their mom, Jennifer Mitchell. Our next question actually comes from our director, Lawrence, who pushes the buttons to get the show on the air every night. He was wondering why the Broncos stadium has been lit up on a few nights when the team is not playing at home. Now, tis the season for holiday parties, so we had a hunch that might be it. We reached out to the Broncos and they confirmed they light up the stadium for holiday parties and for private events and the club levels. They light up the entire stadium because some of the parties have games that involve the field level and the scoreboard. If your uncle on Facebook has convinced you that climate change is a hoax, perhaps you would also be interested in the viewpoint of birds because their migration patterns acknowledge our rapid, rapidly changing climate. The CSU assistant professor Kyle Horan and his team looked at decades of radar imagery and they found birds migrating in spring are reaching stops along their way earlier than they did 20 years ago. They also found that temperature and migration timing are closely aligned. This study is one of the first to examine the impacts of climate change on migration, looking at a whole continent. The research involves hundreds of species representing billions of birds. The CSU study is in the journal Nature Climate Change. Sometimes a shovel will not cut it in the face of a Colorado snowstorm. So one guy brought in the heavy equipment. That is not reindeer you hear on the roof.
have you looked away? You've pulled up to a street corner someplace and come face to face with somebody's holding a sign asking for money. Looked away. Our Travis Cacciatorian took his camera to an art exhibit in Denver that challenges us all not to look away. I can't live with myself knowing that I didn't do something to point this out. Inside a warm art exhibit. You can make every decision right and still end up on this wall. Luna Ray knows warmth is a luxury not everyone can afford. This is a memorial wall for the 300 people that we lost to exposure in 2018. There's gonna be 300 individual pieces of driftwood. It's a work in progress right now. The faces of those who died aren't strangers to her. She experienced homelessness herself and knows the stigma that comes with it. So people are experiencing a loss of humanity as well as a, a loss of the empowerment to get out of this. Her new art takes their struggle and puts it on display. One of the most effective ways I've found to get people to really put themselves in other people's shoes is asking them directly how they would feel in certain situations. There is something historically disconnected to me about a first world country that ha can have 300 people dying of exposure in a single year in a single city. There is something completely disconnected about that that I can't grapple with in any other way but to try to honor them and to try to bring to light what that means. That exhibit will be on the taxi campus in Denver through the end of the month. Luna wanted us to mention the, the face mask wasn't a fashion statement or anything. She just had dental surgery. The most Colorado thing we've seen today is a ski resort that knew that sun was not going to remove the snow from their roof and it would have taken so long with a shovel. So a contractor at Keystone broke out the snow blower. Next viewer named Chuck snapped this photo of him at work. Keystone told us they typically are not using snow blowers for snow removal on the roof, but that last storm dropped a few feet of snow. So they decided to break out the big gun, so to speak. Share the most Colorado thing you've seen using the hashtag HeyNext or email next at 9news.com. The firefighters in Sterling, Colorado have outdone themselves once again. Their Christmas light display is something to see. And your feedback on what supposedly happened at the mall, that's something to hear next.
You think you and your kids get excited for Christmas? Well, not as much as the firefighters out in Sterling. 2017, they went big. They synced up the lights on their fire trucks to Christmas music and shared the video online. 2018's video was straight fire. You had the trucks, you had the music, you had the lights, and you also had pyrotechnics. There they go. This year, they told a whole Christmas story. They've got the Grinch breaking into the Sterling Firehouse, you know, stealing stuff, you know, you know like, like the Grinch does. But then the Grinch, you know, he's also into arson, and they don't look kindly on that up there in Sterling. So this year's video shows the Grinch lighting a Christmas tree on fire, and the firefighters run rushing to put it out. It ends with the Grinch in cuffs. If you want to see it, we'll put it on the next Facebook page for you. They go big in Sterling. Diana Bauman writes in tonight about our debunking of that social media rumor about a child abduction at the mall. She said kudos for that story, though our local anti-trafficking coalition is working hard to educate. Viral hysteria like that only makes real education efforts harder. Appreciate all of those efforts. And again, the problem is real enough that the hype does not help. We'll see you next time.